Have you ever experienced an entire prep ruined in your last seven days before your competition? Literally that peak week coming into the show and not showing how you should have. Are you one of the competitors that are just starting up, you haven't even competed yet, but you hear all the horror stories just about that and you don't want your prep to go to waste? Well, good thing is, you are on First Call Outs. I'm Ryan Milton, and this is the show where every single week I'm breaking down for you everything you need to do competition-wise to get that iconic first call out. What we're going to do on here today is talk about peak week and some of the most common mistakes people make that you know just basically ruin your entire prep. And here's how you can avoid them, and here's what a better solution will be. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel every single Wednesday. I'll be right back here with first call outs just for you. More stuff to help you get that first call out. I'm Ryan Milton. Let's get it going. So if you didn't know what a peak week was, I'm going to break it down for you here real quick or just remind you if you are a competitor. So the peak week in the way that it's toted towards everybody in the competition space is that it's this like iconic, you know, superhuman super time basically that all of a sudden a unicorn is going to pop out your ass in the last seven days before the comp and you're going to peek into your best stage physique all of a sudden right like in seven days by doing all sorts of mythical and weird protocols that actually have no scientific backing you're going to be able to turn it into a whole different person in that last bit of stretch uh, right before your show right and the problem is in reality, that's not true at all. In reality, what happens 90% of the time is doing peak week type stuff. A lot of coaches that push peak week stuff, uh, your physique's going to get off. You're going to actually come into your show worse. You're going to look worse. You're going to come in worse. And some of the stuff that coaches have you do legit lands you in the hospital. I've been at so many different shows where people have uh, passed out backstage due to peak week practices. Uh, you know, they're rushed off in an ambulance or whatever. People actually developing permanently life altering, you know, side effects from a peak week regarding, you know, liver function, organ function, things like that. And so it's just crazy the amount of stuff that is done in a peak week that is actually, you know, not beneficial and actually super harmful and dangerous for you. What could some of these things be, you might ask? Well, water depletion. Okay, so this is the purposeful dehydration of a person. Why do you do it, you might wonder? Well, basically, the, the whole idea that Basically, you know, all these coaches and all these other competitors want to push on you is that if you dehydrate your body, right, if you cut the water out, you're going to look leaner. I don't know where anybody decided that was true at all because in reality, uh, what do you think your muscles are mostly made of, right? If you look at actual anatomy, your muscles are made of largely water, okay? And so as a survival tool of what your body actually is, subcutaneous water, like the water right under your skin, would be the very last water to ever leave your body in a dehydration state. So like, let's say you got air dropped into some desert and you were left there and you had no water, uh, your body would deplete all the water out of your muscles, out of you know everything else before it would ever get down to that last little layer of skin. So this idea that, hey, you know what, if I cut my water out uh, and I start taking diuretics and things like that, which are terrible for your body, then now I'm gonna look leaner, I'm gonna be drier on stage. In reality, yeah, your muscles are going to shrink a ton. You're going to look softer, and you're also causing your body to freak out and say, you know what, what's going on here? Why do we have no water? Why are we depleting water? That's not good for your body at all. It's not good for your metabolism. It's not good for your stage look. It's not good for anything. You're going to deplete the water in your muscles and look way softer on stage. You're going to look way, way softer because, again, this last little bit, this subcutaneous water that you think you're going to remove and show all these muscles is not going to ever go. You're never going to be able to dehydrate yourself enough that you could actually show that. You're going to cut down your muscle mass and then you know, you're going to look softer and feel worse and potentially deal with some side effects. That's probably one of the most common ones people land themselves in the hospitals on, all right? Like the, doing the water depletion and diuretics and things like this in a peak week can land you in the damn hospital. It can cause you to die. Literally, you could have organ failure and other things happen from doing that. As much as you might not think that's true, research it and understand the real science behind it and you will understand that it is a very real and dangerous thing. Uh, again, also, I should say this, 
They like if you think you need to dry out, you're not ready to compete. You think you need to dry out for your show, you didn't get lean enough. You probably carrying too much body fat, and that's actually what the issue is. You should probably push your show out. You probably shouldn't think that you can dramatically change your water in this last bit of seven days, and now you're going to be able to magically look better when you come to the stage. It's just not going to happen. You're going to cause a lot of harm to your body. You're going to look worse if you do compete, and you're going to overall have a terrible, you know, last bit of that competition experience. There's no reason to do that. If you have extra body fat. No big deal. Push the comp out. The stage is always there. You can come back. You can do better. Push it out and do it the right way. Don't come in thinking you're going to be able to do that in seven days. Okay, so that's one of those practices. That's the that's honestly the one I hate the most. Uh, and all the other ones kind of stem on that, right? There's also the whole alcohol thing. The whole you know taking shots of vodka or drinking glasses of wine. All of a sudden, in the last week of your prep, again for the same idea to, to dry out, right? Because alcohol dehydrates you. Any of you that have ever drank enough on a Saturday night and woken up in the morning with a hangover or something like that, that's dehydration effects. And so basically, people again think that if they're going to go ahead and you know do some shots the week of a comp or on the right before they go on stage or drink some wine or whatever, that it's going to dry them out and they're going to look more vascular again. Again, you can't dry out. You, if you think you need to dry out, you're too fat. That's the truth. You're not going to be able to dry out anything. Your body's not going to ever sacrifice that subcutaneous water unless you're like literally about to die. That'd be the last bit of water to ever leave your body in any scenario ever. Okay, so like realistically, you can't do it. You're just depleting your muscles. You're making yourself look softer. And not to mention, uh, you know, a lot of these girls are dramatically already too low on calories and doing tons of cardio, you know, taking some shots of alcohol before they go on stage, you fucking break your heel or something, like break your ankle, right? You're walking around in heels, you can break your ankle, have other problems. Not the best decision, not something I support, not something I say you should do at all. Uh, um, I'm going to keep digging right here into the, into the bad stuff, and then I'm going to give you the solutions, right, and the real stuff. So stay tuned with me, fam. Uh, this is First Call Outs. I'm Ryan Milton, if you're just now getting on here. Um, basically... The other ones, right? Car bloating, that's another one. Car bloating and things like this. So you've gone your whole prep, right? And you've done all these dieting things and now you're gonna load carbs in this last kind of peak week as the same time that you're depleting your water. So the idea here is as you deplete your water and dry out, now you can load your carbs up, have more carbs, and you're gonna fill out more. Like you're gonna look bigger and you know, all of a sudden if you eat more carbs, it's gonna change the way that you look muscularly. Uh, in reality, this is way overdone. This is way, way, way overdone, and it's not at all a great decision to do. Okay, some competitors, I will say, do require some extra carbs from time to time if they've done something that depleted their muscles. But in reality, most of you are not doing things to depleting your muscles. If you think you need to load your carbs, you know, you think you need to do this and that. Don't be doing it the crazy way that people do for the Instagram selfies and shit like that. You know, the stacks of pancakes and all the other stuff. You know, try a little bit. A little bit goes a long way when you've been on a prep diet. And I'll be honest, if you did your prep right, most of you don't need it, okay? I've done it very few times with competitors over the years. And it's simply because I get competitors ready well in advance of the show. I'm not counting on no peak week, you know, for them to come and peek into their magical physique. They have a great physique already for months and months of training off-season, contest prep, multiple shows, etc. They don't need no peak week to go get it, so we don't need to load carbs and do things like that, um, you know, literally 99% of the time, okay? So that's important to know. Uh, the carb loading can negatively affect your physique a ton. What happens to a lot of competitors is they will load carbs and then you know they're gonna they're gonna actually come in super super watery looking like they basically overspilled and they did too much and now they're just bloated and they're watery and they look like shit on stage and so again you wasted that entire prep whatever it was 12 16 weeks to come on low carbs in the last you know stretch of time and now your physique looks off it's not a great idea it's not, you know do less than you think you should if you do do that and see how you look, assess it, and go from there. There's not really any reason to mess with it, though. Sodium manipulation would be another one of these things here. So, you know, I'm kind of going down the list, and all these are intertwined, and it's all crazy. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. But sodium manipulation is the next one, right? People uh, go along the lines of, hey, you know what, if we should 
dehydrate if we should purposely deplete water and we're going to go ahead and also do the alcohol shots and stuff to dehydrate ourselves more and then you know what actually i heard somewhere sodium holds water so we'll cut the sodium down too so we're not holding any water again not a great thing right not a good thing for your body you know what's funny about doing the whole sodium thing is um if you've ever had a cheap meal right that's high sodium it actually helps you it helps you helps you look better right you're gonna actually this is why a lot of competitors say after their peak week right they're like wow I look better the day after the show because they went and ate like a burger and fries or something that had some salt on it and then it you know made them look better because sodium actually is great for your body it's great for your physique it looks good when you have it in your diet the right way so sodium again not manipulating in peak week if you're training with team flex that's not what I do that's not what I believe in we don't do that at all I have your sodium in a good spot the entire prep nice health a nice healthy range for you the whole prep and then you know coming in show day keeping it the same you shouldn't be changing it you shouldn't be messing with it if you deplete your sodium again in an effort to try to deplete your water you're going to deplete like all sorts of shit out of your body essential minerals and other things you need that's going to dramatically affect your ability to you know feel good uh through that peak week on show day etc a lot of people get dizzy spells and all sorts of other things and you can avoid all that if you don't do it right it's not good and it's honestly going to make your physique look worse again you're going to flatten out you're going to look you know softer and you're going to have less muscle mass on stage presenting which is like totally counterintuitive to any division you would ever do right so you don't want to do that um, sodium manipulation, take that off the list. That's a no go. Okay. The next one would be, you know, one of the most common things is kind of changing up all your workouts. Now you're taking a whole prep where you've probably followed some very similar workouts, right? If you're training on a training program, you should be following very similar workouts. You should be continually doing the same types of movements that you need to do to get better at, to look better, to build more muscle, to attain the right physique for your division. Okay. Everybody's different. Uh, the programs you're going to follow are all going to be different. But in reality, that should be the truth. That's going to remain the same. You know, you're training and you're probably doing some of the same stuff. Now, peak week comes along and a lot of coaches, a lot of trainers like to be like, hey, you know what? Let's change the whole thing. Let's let's, let's start doing 20, uh, 30 reps of everything. We're going to do all this stuff in an effort to, you know, deplete the body down again so that we can load it with carbs and it's going to look better. One of the worst things you can do, one of the worst things you can do right away is that because in reality, when you change up your workouts now, you've taken what was predictable, what was consistent and made it now unpredictable and consistent. Okay. So doing all these reps and all these things, you could get super sore. If you get sore, a part of the recovery process of your muscle structure is to hold more water in the muscles, right? So again, for those of you that are going to have problems, you don't want to, you know, you're worried about holding water. You're worried about, don't be doing that shit. Then if you're worried about that, right? If you want to look your best, keep training the way that's made you look your best. Okay. Don't be doing all that crazy shit peak week and then you know all this other stuff like where people are doubling up their cardio now doing two, three, four hours a day. Literally all the peak week practices and there's tons and tons more I could continue to go into and I probably will in the future. I just don't want to make a like a five hour long video about this. But you know literally all the peak week practices are very, very counterintuitive to what you're actually trying to do. They most of the time deplete you, make you look flatter, and make you look softer, and make you not present your best because oh, your head isn't in their game, right? Because you're, you know, you're doing super low calories, you're depleting your water, you're doing all this random shit to your body. It's gonna mess with your mental state as it is, and then physically you're not feeling your best, and so now you're not coming into the show your best at all. Okay, you're not coming into your show at the best at all. You get the shakes because you're so messed up. All these different things are going on, and so in reality, all the peak week practices, I'll tell you where they stem from the very early days of bodybuilding okay back in like the 1960s and 70s kind of the Arnold, Arnold era the golden era of bodybuilding when it was a very small group of you know Olympians doing stuff it was literally just bodybuilders and they were trying to figure out how to deal with the side effects of massive amounts of steroid use okay so if you don't know one of the main side effects of performance enhancing drugs steroids like all the bodybuilders would use back then and a lot do today was um 
Water retention. So you hold a bunch of water, right? Like you actually hold a ton of water when you're on that kind of stuff because it helps you build more muscle. And so with that, all these guys are sitting around and they're like, you know what? We don't know what to do. We got all this water. We're looking, you know, whatever, puffy and all this shit. We got to drop it. And that was their school of thought back then was to drop it. And so they came up with literally all the practices from other sports, right? Like sports where you need to make weight. So like wrestling and things like that where you have to compete in a weight class. And so what they do in a weight class is try to drop water last minute before a wrestling match so that they can drop water weigh in and then load it back up and go and compete and wrestle at a heavier weight right like when you are you know like MMA does this now today where you're trying to meet a weight class so you're purposely depleting water and things like that sure because you're not gonna hold any more weight from the water but in bodybuilding in bikini and all these other things we're not doing you know uh, specific weight classes in the girls divisions and stuff like that bikini and whatnot and so that can be totally counterintuitive it doesn't even make sense literally you're doing a practice that was for you know a weight cut when you're not getting weighed bikini girls you're not getting weighed to go out on there on stage so the point is um, it doesn't help your physique at all. Like that's something that comes from the old days when they didn't know more. The new science all shows none of this stuff has any merit. None of this stuff actually helps you. None of this stuff is making you perform or look or do any better on stage. It's actually hurting you if anything, right? Like the amount of people I've talked to that have insane, insane side effects from doing peak weeks and things like that for years to come, it's crazy. I'm very, very active in the industry. I talk to people at shows, I talk to people on uh, social media and things like that all the time. And I hear so many horror stories about all this kind of stuff. It's insane. The type of stuff coaches have people do, waking up, you know, drinking salt packets and catch up in the middle of the night four times and sipping on a certain measurement of water, people uh, you know, having to measure the amount of urine they're peeing out of their bodies to make sure that they're getting that amount back, I don't even know. It's just the craziest things, okay? It's all insane, it doesn't help you, it makes you look worse, it doesn't make any damn sense, honestly. And so here's the true solution of how you should run a peak week, how I've run them for every single competitor I've ever coached since the very first one, and now we're talking thousands of placings. We got pros, we got amateurs, we got everybody. Thousands of placings though over the years now. And uh, that would be not possible by the way if the type of shit that I did for peak week didn't work. So since it does, um, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Don't change shit if you've done the right stuff leading up to a show. So if you've done a prep that was correctly built, right? If you did something that was custom for your physique to attain the right physique, and then you did the right types of nutrition, not too strict, not too crazy, and you didn't go and do a bunch of steroids and performance enhancing drugs, then guess what? You don't need to do crazy anything in peak week. You don't need to do crazy anything different at all to have your best physique. Your physique will be best outside of that seven day window. Like you're gonna be right there coming into the show about two weeks out, you're gonna look how you should look on stage if you do a correct prep and you got a coach that's guiding you the right way. I get all of my competitors right on the point, you know, two, three weeks out from a show so that I know, okay, we're here, we're ready, we're ready to go. And now anything comes up, you know, you might eat something that changes your body a little bit. You might get sick. All kinds of stuff comes up, right? We never know what's coming up. Now we can deal with it. We have time. You're in the realm. You're in the right spot. I'm not trying to peek you into comp day at all because I know that that doesn't exist and it would also be extremely hard to do even if it could be done. It can't be done. So get ready in advance of your competition. If you've done the prep correctly, you've done the training and the nutrition the right way and you have a coach that's guiding you the right way, guess what? You don't need no peak week. What you need to do is cruise into the damn show. I always say the peak week is the easiest week of prep because literally that's what it is to me. Like once you hit that peak week, it is a simple cruise in. You've done all the work leading up, you are ready to go, and now you just go and present. You should have the easiest experience on peak week. Peak week should be heavily focused towards getting everything else ready. It should be focused on you know packing your bags, making sure all your last minute stuff is booked, your, your tans, your makeup, your hair, you know where everything's gonna be, you got your travel plan set, and you're finishing up your last bit of workouts and things like that but you're not going crazy okay what I even suggest for most of my competitors is they stop training on the Wednesday before that Saturday they compete so literally
literally they have you know two three days to do nothing but mentally prepare to do nothing but make sure everything is in order and they don't need to be training okay and that means that they're ready well in advance if I can do that then I know that me and myself as a coach I've trained that person well enough that they're in a good spot and they can come in and do well at their show they don't need to be trying to you know bust things last minute or come up with peak week shit to make a unicorn pop out their ass it just won't damn happen so um, I have people you know dial back on peak week I have them stop training midweek I have them you know eat the same damn foods they've been eating the whole prep I don't got no magic food list for you I'm not giving you crazy new workouts I'm not telling you to take diuretics I'm not telling you to drop any water I'm not telling you any of that shit you know know why because you were ready they were ready in advance those competitors are ready to go and it is now time to go and present and when they show up feeling good they're looking good and they perform well they do well and they can do all those things a hell of a lot better not doing any peak week than anything else like even if you decide to just hit the stage right you're like you're a first time or something like that and you might have you know just gone through your first prep and you're not 100 percent like in your best physique Here's a few things that you should consider. You should probably still hit the stage. Even, I mean, like if you've done a whole prep and you're like, you're, you're feeling a little off, whatever, go hit the stage. Go get some feedback from the judges. Get out there, enjoy yourself, have a good time, and now your foot is in the door. Okay, you gotta remember bodybuilding in general, right? Like all these divisions, it's all about continual growth and continual betterment. Like your first show, your second show, your third show, your fourth, your fifth, your twentieth show, you're gonna have a different physique every time. You're gonna look better, hopefully, right? That's the goal is to continue to grow and prosper and continue to move forward in this sport and with your goals and with your physique overall and everything else. And so with that, you got to understand that it's progressive. You shouldn't try for perfection on your first show. You shouldn't try for perfection ever. You should continue to try to get better and that should be your goal. But if you are constantly, you know, running from the stage, worried about this and that, don't try to do crazy peak week stuff if you don't think you're ready for a show. Either go do the show and have a great time, get feedback and do better next time or push the show out. Those are really your two options when it comes to doing any of these competitions. But don't think that last minute you can add in tons more cardio, you can start manipulating things like your water, your sodium, your carbs, any of that stuff and get a better result. You're not gonna get a better result, you're gonna get a worse result and you might also damage your health for potentially the rest of your damn life. So it's definitely not something I suggest, it's definitely not something I recommend. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit more thought, a little more clarity. I know I've done a lot on Peak Week over the years, if you scroll back on the channel, you'll probably be able to see some of that. I'm going to keep doing a lot more of this, honestly. I need to hit on this more because as many times as I've covered it, there's still so many people doing the wrong stuff. There's still so much of the bad information out there. So I'm just going to try to swarm it, inundate it, keep it going, give you guys more information. I'll tell you straight up though, like I said, thousands of competitors I've coached, uh, amateurs and pros, never done any of those practices and they win their shows. They place at their competitions, they do well, and that is because of the fact that everything, uh, you know, the whole prep is done correctly. If you want help with your prep, if you want to get serious about doing a show and you want to do it the right way, maybe you've done it bad before, or maybe you're a first timer and you never want to go that route, hit up my website, teamffelex.com, check out our free trial, and let us know you want to compete. And we'll set you up, we'll show you, you know, some free stuff in that free week, and then hopefully we can get you on a program, and me or one of my coaches can take you to your next show and bring your best physique to the stage ever all right so team ffelex dot com subscribe to the email this is first call outs that was peak week mistakes please make sure you're not making them please make sure you're not promoting them and share this video if you got anything out of it and make sure you subscribe to the channel because coach rye ryan milton will be right back here every single wednesday for first call outs the show dedicated towards helping you get that first call out coach rye is out